Mexico, I said, I actually would like to redact my second team because I agree and I thought of that prior. It's been uh, Commissioner Laughlin well, stated that. Well, point of order, I think if we vote this down, we can then have a motion to do each one second. Yeah, then let's do that. Then I will not redact. Just take the vote on the motion. Can you see if you have anything you want to say? Is there anybody else that's already chirped in? Nope, because we're kind of covered in the debate. Okay. Part, part of my motion then, Kip, if you would, would you explain why you want to defer to be four and five? Well, I've provided legal advice to the commission that I believe an executive session is needed prior to these issues being acted on in public session. All and three, so I, all three of them. All three of them, correct. Why would we have an executive session for election on a law project? That's part of my legal advice. Okay. Okay. Call the question. That's, that's his job. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Brown Krause? No. Commissioner Clifford? No. Commissioner Engelman? No. Commissioner Laughlin? Yes. Commissioner Platt? Commissioner Polston? No. Commissioner Woolsey? No. I move that we table uh, the yeah, I, I am really tired of getting run over in the process of everybody just started. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I love the motion. Yes, ma'am. I move that we table um, item number three. You want to table or defer? I want you to table. Yes. 
Commissioner Engelman? Yes. Commissioner Laughlin? No. Commissioner Platt? Commissioner Colson? Yes. Commissioner Woolsey? Yes. As part of, as part of my one. vote, I'm going to ask one question to commissioners. What are you guys afraid of that you're not going to be able to, that you will see in this in report? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, it. That's, my, that's my comment after the vote, um, which I am allowed to do. But it was a question. So why do you not want to hear what we're afraid of? Because we're not afraid. We just don't that get someone to tell us how to do it. That is my explanation for my vote. Okay. Wait, we have a motion. We have a second. It, there was discussion. It was voted on. The next Thank item on the agenda. Next one is the commission officers. I vote. I vote for Kathy. Yes. No, 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 no. We got to make a motion. Let's start this again. I'm opening the election of commission officers. Uh, is there a second for that? Okay. Chip, as part of our discussion, would you please explain to the commissioners why we do not want to do this tonight? Mr. Chairman, I've provided you with my legal advice and I've provided it to all the commissioners as to why I don't think it's appropriate to have an election of commissioners tonight. I would prefer to have an executive session to discuss some of the legal issues behind it before a vote is taken on that, which is why I would. My recommendation is to defer it to Monday, but I don't want to get into the rationale or the reasons behind it because that's, that's why I want the executive session to be able to talk about that. Can I discuss on that? Yes, ma'am. Um, Y'all were just saying the phrases of Mr. McFadden parliamentary attorney and head of this and that and the other. And she's the one that recommended the election be held at the next meeting. This is the next meeting. So are we supposed, supposed to listen to her when it benefits y'all or when it benefits us? Who's y'all? <laughs> I'm your attorney. I'm the commission's attorney. I made my recommendation. We don't have to, you know, with all due respect to the single man, I provide you my legal advice. You don't have to listen to it. You can you can prefer you can prefer not to listen to it. I've given it to you. I think that's what you hired me for was to give you legal advice. And that's what I did. So whether you choose to follow it or not, that's your decision as commissioner. You can't force you to do anything. So we're back into the situation of this commission ignoring legal advice that is being given to us. Yes, we are. No, and that's kind of that's a bit rude of way to say. But I'm, so, I'm just saying, no, I don't believe that it's about ignoring. It's just she's not understanding why Mrs. McFadden gave it this this advice, and now Chip is giving this advice. Well, so that's all. we paid money. Yes, that's all. Paid money. Go ahead. Um, we paid a lot of money for this report, and if it's wrong, then so we need to get a refund. Because um, we're given information and we're following it, and now we're told, you know, this was an information. This information was we paid for this. Um, all of this, these 14 pages of stuff that we got, that it cost us money. Yes, it did. And um, you know, we got um, an attorney who um, specialized for special purpose, but we chose to. Um, we're gonna tell us how. This, she's an expert and she's all of this, and you know, it, it's, it's very confusing. Well, gee, that's kind of the reason that I wanted to have her here to answer questions as part of the report. But since you folks have decided that you want to table this instead of asking her the question directly, I don't guess we'll ever find out the answers to what you and Commissioner Poston have just uh, mentioned that she doesn't understand why, uh, I forget what the rest of the question was, but I, heard that I don't understand why. So how can we possibly find out the answers to I don't understand why 
if you are able. <coughs> no, ma'am, I'm, I'm speaking. Oh, boy. Can I say your name to you? You had your hand up. It's so long ago, I've forgotten. So I'm going to give Ms. Clifford my time. She was next. All right, we just had the vote where we tabled the issue. So how did she know not to be here tonight to hear a decision on that? So you, um, I guess you assumed that we were going to table it in the first place because otherwise she should be sitting in that chair right now. And yes, he would have incurred time and mileage for her to come down and to go back. But um, somebody took it upon themselves to tell her not to even be here before the vote was even taken. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm going to Obviously, somebody screwed up on this agenda and forgot to put the executive session on there. Uh, and no, ma'am, it wasn't requested. Oh, it was deliberate. You deliberately did that. It wasn't requested. Well, um, the staff and you should have known that if you had this report from a lawyer, you should have put it on there. Who put the report from a lawyer? I didn't request this. You did. Who put yeah. that on? Number one on the agenda. Then you should have put on there um, executive session, but you didn't. I just wondered if four and five would be another way about that. I thought of it. I thought of it when he said that. We can do that tonight and ratify it Monday as to what we voted on tonight. But you can't if there's a box. You don't need to box. If something is done in violation of the FOIA, ratification is insane. How do you yeah. fix it? That's why I wanted to go into executive session. Well, I mean, what you can tell us is common knowledge, didn't you? I mean, no, I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. But you had the well, majority vote to ratify the agenda. What do you mean, ratify the change agenda? Change the agenda to what? You can't, you can't change the agenda after it's been published. So you can't add executive session, you can't change the agenda. Well, we, we told the people we're going to have election. It's on the agenda. We posted it. The public is here, so I think we should have election of uh, commission officers. Even though it's in violation of FOIA. So, now I want to uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. We're talking, having a discussion up here. We don't need comments from out there in the audience. Yes, ma'am. If it's in violation of FOIA, why did it appear on the agenda in the first place? If that's already previous knowledge. Because it was specifically requested, everything that you see on here was specifically requested by the commissioners to, to be on the agenda. <coughs> so just because they asked for it and it's brought to light that it's a FOIA violation, then it appears on the agenda anyway? The, we got the legal the, advice. The agenda had already been published when I gave the opinion. Potentially so the horse was already out of the stable and then we shut the gate. And my, my suggestion through my legal advice was that we have an executive session to discuss these things. I do have some recommendations and some opinions as to how we can work through these issues, which is why I wanted to have an executive session. But we can't add executive session to the agenda once it's already been published. You can't add that during the course of the meeting. So that's why I gave the recommendations that I did about items 3, 4, and 5, which all You've heard my opinions, and you know, I do believe that there are FOIA violations by moving forward with the one prior to the session. I did, I'm going back to Commissioner Wolfe's comment. We got number three FOIA compliance report, respect to Adam Parliamentary. But you knew it had to be done in the executive session, so it's not on the agenda. Have y'all already told her tonight not to come? Yes. yes. <laughs> she was on her way here. And uh, according, to, uh, according to the legal opinions that we had requested, all of the legal opinion was that all three of the three, four, and five were to be um, referred to a later, just a minute, referred to a later meeting. And uh, we've set up the executive session for the Monday meeting uh, where we could discuss all of this and, and, and get it straightened out. 
I do request that it's put on Monday's agenda that it's put on last. The executive session? It is. I want to get through business before yeah. we deal with it. Yeah, and the executive so that way session. we have the choice of whether we want to. I'll call the question. Yeah. Second. Okay. Um, What's the motion? The vote is to vote. We're going to end debate and vote. We've got to have nominations first. Um, We're going to end the debate on. Being in the process of that, then I need to turn this over to Mr. Wise to run the electoral in this case. Okay. Um, I had my vote run and I had my hand up before the question was called. I had my hand up before the question was called. Mr. Riverton? Yes, my, as legal counsel to the commission, I have recommended that the vote not be taken on 3, 4, and 5 until we can have an executive session to discuss it. I believe that there are FOIA violations that need to be discussed. Um, and proper notices need to be given before any actions are taken, which is why I request an executive session on the Which is why um, you will or will not be able to officiate in the election. Normally it's the this administrator. And, mm -hmm. and he is referred to our attorney. I don't want to be part of the court of violation. Well, I'll do it as vice chair. Um, if, it, if it gets challenged, just just know that if somebody challenges it, the court is probably not going to uphold whatever election takes place. Then we redo it again. Same results. Because one thing, we had postponed five already from the meeting before to move it to this one, and, you know. The one on four right now. I know, but we're talking about the four, uh, five, two. You kept bringing up three, four, and five. Right, that's we my, my been, advice is to defer all three of them. But we've already moved five one time before. I will say, I think it's unfortunate to have to move it again, but it sounds like this might be in our best interest. I personally think from everything, you know, that all of this, I just, well, I really would like to hear what this girl Crouch is going to have to try. This is <laughs> seven pages of FOIA violations, so I don't get She's real honest. worried about FOIA violations. She should, should be. be. It should be. <coughs> um, thank you very much for that. Um, number one, um, the attorney has given us his opinion. We hire him because um, he is here to direct us to make sure we don't do anything wrong. Now, my question number one, um, with these three, four, and five, is that on in the executive session for Monday night? If that is in, a, my, wait a minute, let me finish. If it's in the um, executive session for Monday night, Guys, let's do what is correct. I don't want to have for you. Um, I just don't want to. Let's, let's wait until Monday night and let's come in here and let's do make it to be go. Let's not. Let's not. I mean, we've been screwing around from January. I am tired. I feel like, hey, let's wait and let's do what is correct. We don't need an attorney if we're not going to follow his direction. That is my person. But we are following uh, an attorney's direction. All right, number five, the appointment of acting district administrator. In that regard, the administrative committee was given the task to find a replacement for a permanent position. It was never discussed about an acting one which I don't see how that could be a problem because here we are with all, almost the full commission minus um, poor Commissioner Platt who's been sick for a week. But Mr. Wise is going to be gone by the end of this month. Y'all know that we're on September 19th, might as well be. Let's just go ahead and call it that because tonight's shot. So we have to have somebody in place that can take over while, while he is 
he's being he's retiring. I mean, so that's that's that. I don't see how this is a problem. So um, I would like be to be effective October one. Would what be? Yeah. I I do not have that information right this second. Um, I would think so because your last day was the thirtieth. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Well, I would. Um, so I, I would well, say I would. Well, I uh, would like to. Um, but, uh, we're skipping. We're skipping here. Let's go back to the one we're working on. I believe point of order. I made a motion to close debate. It was seconded. We need to have a vote on closing debate. On three. On three. No, three's Wait, been, did, I three's already four. voted on. Yes, we are ready. Ready. We need to on add four. something to this. Now, we're going to hear an executive session Monday night while we're not supposed to be holding an election. No, 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 no. That's what? not what I'm saying. What are you saying? I, I'm not saying you don't need to be holding an election. I'm, my, what I'm saying is you don't need to be holding an election tonight until we've had a chance, until I've had a chance to give you legal advice about the parameters and ramifications and all that type of stuff. I'm not telling you not to have an election. I'm just, my recommendation is not to have it tonight. But it sounds like that'll be your same recommendation Monday night. I didn't say that. But you did not. not say that. Well, uh, I'm going Ms. by Poston. Mrs. McFadden's report. Ms. Um, Ms. Poston has some thought. I, because you know, it was what uh, Ms. Clifford was speaking of, you know, item five on the agenda, and I, I can I totally concur uh, that I wish we could go ahead and vote on this. I am interested, if necessary. I completely understand number four, uh, certainly number three, um, being, you know, moved, but I am, you know, I know we closed out number three, but I understand number four. Number five, you said maybe we need to go back to this in a moment, so that's why I was going to just wait and go back to what I was going to say then, after we dealt with four. So let's just move forward to four. Right uh, Mr. Chair, my favorite quote from Patrick Henry is, I smell a rat. I think, and I think uh, Mrs. Uh, Engelman smells a rat too. I think this, this meeting was put in violation and the, uh, uh, it was written wrong on deliberate to stall. And we haven't voted on what we're going to do with four, so we can't move on five yet. Yeah, that's right. why I apologize. I, I so Y'all chose to take them separately, so you need to take them in order. You voted on three. Four is currently on the table being discussed. Well, I'm going to tell you, if we couldn't have Monday night and an executive session, you tell us we aren't supposed to hold elections yet, I'm going to be upset with you. But that's what you gonna be telling us Monday I, night. You've done it. I'd like to see Monday's night agenda right now. Uh, I don't have a copy with me. I'm sure she can go get us one. Well, and adjustments can be made to it, and we'll need to be made so that we can add that yeah. to the agenda. Yeah. Well, let's see if this is on agenda for Monday night. Can let, you pull let, it up? It won't be. Let's the executive oh, session on the agenda. Yes, I'll be. I'm talking about the election. Is that on? No, because he wants to do the executive okay. session. Okay, I, I, I smell the rat even stronger. Well, let me ask you a question. It's not on the agenda. The election it's, is not on the agenda. It's, it's, lying to. it's just now. Let me to. ask you a question as part of the discussion. When was the request for this meeting given to the office? I believe it was Monday. Monday morning. Monday. What is our time frame? 36 hours. Okay. Monday morning or Monday mid? It was morning. Monday morning. Okay. So we're looking at the very basic minimum of the time frame of what can have a meeting after the request is done so that you can get all the announcements out. Is that correct? I don't understand. 48 hours is from Monday morning to Wednesday morning. So we pass that time. So basically, that's the basic of two days is our basic of trying to get the, from the request to the, the, the meeting with all of the announcements out in the middle. Is that right? We can dance as any dance you want. No, no, but I'm just I'm saying, just I know this isn't on the agenda for Monday night. We're going to hear from the attorney in executive session. So we still don't have it on the agenda. So you're still talking about moving it out so another month, go and we don't need to go another month. That's gone for a fight. It's not going to be live. Yes, if I may, I would like to say 
I move that then also we need to add it to the agenda for Monday. And if during executive session we come to a, an agreement, you know, that okay, it needs to be taken from the agenda, again, we will take it from the agenda and we will need it added and it will be added because we have enough time that it can. Well, the problem with that is the executive session and the, the end of the meeting. Yes, and again, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It can be at any time in the meeting and that's what we'll do. If it's on the agenda, as long as it's on the agenda, so, and that's what we'll do. So that's what so we'll be doing for Monday's meeting. Can do, we can do the whatever. You can take it out of order. You just yes. can't add it to an agenda. It's so that's day. why it so needs to be put in, and executive session will be done on Monday. Is everybody through interrupting? I haven't been interrupting. I was the one who was speaking in the first place, saying that this is how we will do it. That is all. And so I need to be allowed to speak as well, and finish my sentences and my thoughts and my decisions on what we need to be doing moving forward. And that is what we are going to do. The end. So now you may speak. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're so welcome. So what you're saying is we do the executive session and then after the executive session we do the, 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 the vote, the election? Yes. And that needs to be added to the agenda. So yes. Why did we all gather tonight? Because we don't all like each other enough to be sitting in a room. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> but you know, we're sitting here an hour now, and nothing's been accomplished but postponing everything till Monday. And if I may, you may. May I speak? Regarding, so we did this agenda, and then it was reviewed, you know, by our attorney, and we were told that this needs to go, you know, until Monday, and so that's what we'll have to do. Uh, we will be speaking about number six on the agenda <laughs> tonight, but the rest needs to be, you know, closed as we did with three, and then moving forward. Obviously, we still are waiting to vote for four and five, but it'll be moved till Monday. So, but we didn't know that that was going to have to happen. Okay. Um, look. Let me understand. So, uh, in the elect, um, executive session, we're going to have the election of officers? No. Not in no. 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 We won't no. be doing it Monday. There will be no election of officers on Monday. So, then we need to go and do it now. Exactly. I mean, let's not... Um, then when are we going to do it? On Monday. Monday one. It can't be put on the agenda because the agenda is already closed the, and printed. The agenda no. can off. Yeah. It, it can be changed. Yeah. Of course it can be changed. It has not gone out. It's not going out. It won't go out until tomorrow afternoon. So let me. Do we um, have to suspend the rules of procedure to amend the agenda tonight? Because to I, amend the agenda for Monday? Yeah. No, because our rules changed. say they've already made it and they can't change it. That's what they're telling me. No, they've already written a letter. He's already written a letter. Written letter. Oh, we've already done it. No, you give under forty. You can make changes to an agenda as long as you're still within your notice requirements. And we have not seven. posted right. it yet. It will go out to everybody. I don't know if tomorrow. I trust you. It will mm. happen. Well, we are all going to make sure. Right. You didn't do this right. I, I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. I'm going to be calling what the rule of disruption in the order here. Uh -huh. So I'm, I'm requesting everybody to let's calm this down, <laughs> one person at a time, discussions from this point on. And the insults to everybody, or to anybody, is not acceptable as part of the discussion. I didn't mean it's an insult, I'm just telling you a fact. I don't trust you. I don't trust you to want to see me. Fine. Excuse me? I don't trust you. I see what you've done here tonight, and that's why I don't trust either one of you. All, all we did was post what we requested. No, you stuck something in there that was not. One I, none of us requested you that. All right, all right, all right. Enough. That Enough. Yes, I did. Yes. But I was trying to make sure you that were there was. Trying to do nothing. I was trying to make sure that we didn't dig any holes any deeper with the FOIA violations that we have already and we're about to add to tonight in the process of doing these elections and the appointment. What you folks are talking about doing tonight is illegal. 
And if it's illegal, you're digging a bit deeper hole for the FOIA part of the process. No, ma'am, I'm not through yet. Let's vote on this. Vote on what? Vote, I'd like to make it a, a, a statement. I have a right to do so as the administrator, but I'm totally opposed to oh, yeah. moving forward because these are pointed out FOIA violations referenced by two attorneys. The other attorney agreed that this would be a FOIA violation to proceed, so both attorneys have stated that. So the bottom line is I'm in total opposition, and I want to be put on the record that you all have been told that this is a potential FOIA violation, and if you proceed, you're adding to the 16-page list of FOIA violations you currently have. Mr. Burlington, I had a question for you as part of this discussion. What are the repercussions of FOIA violations to this commission? Into the people that serve on it. Well, a knowing, a a knowing, violation, a knowing violation of FOIA is actually a criminal action. It's a misdemeanor. Well, I would like to ask since these things from Ms. McFadden date back to January, why haven't any of us been arrested yet? <laughs> why because nobody's we, called us on it. She knew about it, so she could fall for not she, calling us on it. She's working on the report. She's the expert. All right, so we have p potential criminal action as a result if we continue on with this tonight. If there is a knowing violation of FOIA by a public body or its officials, it can be a criminal charge, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. So you say saying I can go to jail? Yes, ma'am. I'll well, go with you. I can't understand why you explain to me why we can't call an emergency uh, executive session. It's this obviously doesn't qualify as an emergency. Well, doesn't. Why would it be an emergency? What's the urgency of doing it tonight? We have uh, storm debris that isn't being picked up. That's number six. Yeah. We can talk about number six. I'm, my question is, what's the urgency in doing three, four, and five tonight? Because Why is it necessary the, tonight? The people stopping the storm debris creek are sitting right there. That doesn't have anything to do with 3.5. Uh, that could very well be. And that happens to be because right? I don't want to go to jail and I don't want to take any penalties. Well, you could already go to jail because you were elected illegally. Well, yeah, yeah I found that yeah. out later. Well, you should resign right now. <laughs> oh, my word. We got not, we got to go on or something. We're getting out of hand. Yeah. Wait, what do I have to do to send him to jail? <laughs> Warren Warrior. We have a lawyer. He tells us he's the lawyer for the commission. We have a lawyer. You're a lawyer at yes. well, all, 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 all of this is why I wanted to have an executive session. All of this that y'all are doing in the public domain in front of cameras, in front of everybody that's here, is why I wanted to have an executive session. Y'all hired me to give you legal advice. You don't have to follow it, but I, I should be given an opportunity to get it. And I requested that through an executive session. Um, I sent an explanatory email. I also suggested that I would provide a complete memorandum of law supporting why I had the opinions that I did. I can't force you to do anything, but this is the whole situation I was trying to avoid, is this back and forth and the calling of each other out and questioning things and talking about attorneys' opinions is not appropriate for public session. You, you potentially are waiving every right that you have to attorney-client privilege. But my thing in this, Ms. McFadden said election should have been, should have been held in July. Why was June? Why was it ever brought to our attention? That we can get that me. report until after July. Yeah, that predates me. I, I we can't get that report until recently. Well, why, she knew it in July, so why didn't she say something? Because she was putting together a full report she, uh, for this commission to address FOIA recent issues. Uh, well, that's why I okay. Okay. This is exactly what happened during the budget. You get found out too much, too little, and too late. So now all of a sudden it is a three alarm fire. And if it's so important that we have this executive session, why is it listed last? And y'all know how long our meetings go. Wouldn't that be the first thing out the box? That was requested by the attorney. Well, 
Because you, you've been to these, right? Yeah, no. You know that we'd be uh, 11.45 calling you to have the, executive the, session. The reason that I requested executive session be at the end is, be, in fairness to the people that come to the meetings, they don't have to get sent outside and wait for an hour and a half, two hours while we're in executive session and then brought back in for additional um, meeting matters. Well, that, and that's nice that you can save their time, but if they know the decisions of the debates that go on here, then I'd stand outside that door all night long if I had known it would have made a difference when they jacked up the taxes 13%, and that's why I ran. Well, that's why you can, as long as it's on the agenda, it can be moved. The order can be switched. And that's that's my beef, okay? That's that's my issue. I understand and I appreciate your legal counsel and the time and energy that you put into this. Um, I do think there's some conflicting stories going on, and especially even the status of Ms. McFadden. She told me to my face that she's retired. She's not an active attorney anymore. They have CLEs that they have to keep up with. So I'm, I'm also used to make sandwiches for a living, but guess what? And I'll tell people that I'm a sandwich maker. You're a sandwich maker? Uh, excuse me. Oh, I got right well, I'd like to move and go ahead and decide what about item four on the agenda, if we are going to close and move on to discussion of five. So I would like okay. to do that. We just have to vote on it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let's go ahead and I, I move to go ahead and move. On, we're voting on number four. The motion is to... Uh, I don't think there is a motion. There is no, that's right. one motion. Conduct election um, and if been deferred by Mr. Wise because he doesn't want to do anything illegal in the process. And it's motion? also been deferred by our attorney because he doesn't want to do it. Well, it was deferred by Ms. Poston, Secretary <laughs> Commissioner, also. I deferred this be moved and that we wait. You requested I'm, it. Yes, I am. So I as well have done this. And, and that is what and, I want to go ahead and say. And I second that okay. myself. Kathy, let's, um, I don't know, let's put this on Monday night. Yeah, we're 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 item number so four and wait and we have a discussion and add that to the agenda next on Monday. That will be added to Monday's agenda, and so we can discuss an executive session first. We well, have to make a motion. And That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm making Let's a motion. On. And he said he seconds. Please, for the record, restate the motion. The third, no, the May I please? It's her motion. Let her this state is mine. Yes. My motion is that item four on this agenda for the special meeting be moved to Monday night's meeting. So that we first will have executive session to discuss before deciding if we will be moving forward or if it will have to be held again. Second, if I offer. Yes. and the second and, and the 4,000 hours of discussion we just had, we're deferring them before to Monday if the vote is yes. So if you will call the roll, please. Commissioner Brown Crouch? No. Okay. Commissioner Clifford? No. Commissioner Engelman? No. Commissioner Laughlin? Yes. Commissioner Platt? Commissioner Polston? Yes. Commissioner Woolsey? No. Commissioner Brown Crouch? No. Motion fails. Uh, okay. So, who's going to run the election? Because I'm not going to. I'm not going to dig a hole any deeper than it already is. Mr. Wise is not going to. He's not going to dig a hole any deeper than it is. And our attorney is not going to. Ms. Commissioner Wolfe said she would handle it. All right, so Commissioner Woolsey wants to hold an Ill illegal election. I will be leaving now because I do not want to sit through an illegal election. Um, the only other thing is that we've always been very courteous to the other commissioners that we're not able to be here for as important of an election as this. 
and, and Mr. Clay gave us ample time that he would not be here for that. And I think it would be only fair on his behalf that he be here to be part of this with the management process. I'll do this. I'll change my vote right now if we let the vice chair chair the meeting Monday night.
If nobody else will, I will. Number one, uh, you're appointing an acting administrator, uh, and we have not had any of the four um, applications brought forward to the administrative committee. Um, we don't even know whether or not the application that we have received will um, set up so that we will hire one of those people. We have just subverted the process by taking the administrative committee out of the sequence of events and it was uh, announced or directed by the commission a few months ago. So um, the administrative committee has just been completely washed out of the program. The administrative committee, of which I am a member, was given the task to go through any applicants that come in and then make our recommendation to the full committee, or to the full commission, pardon me, for that decision to be made. Nowhere did we ever discuss, hey, you know what, especially in the middle of a hurricane and the 19 other things that seem to go on around here, um, we know somebody is leaving. Um, we would like to have an interim somebody that knows about what's going on, that knows all the areas and such, and and that was never covered. And correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Poston, are you not, or Commissioner Poston, are you not also on the administrative committee? Uh, I am, and I remember that we did review the uh, applicants, you know, remember? But yes, that still but has nothing to no, do with it. No, but that's, room. no, it doesn't, yes, exactly. Was I agree with everything you just said. Excuse me, I have a question. When did we review the applicants? Um, um, well, the last I know when. The last meeting last we did. Meeting. No, we did. Yes, yes we did. did. But we stood yes, here right. and we all did. And you were not this year. So I have no idea. We have not even read through Yeah, you people. were supposed to. You, you promised that you would scan them and send them to us. And I told you, I have a scanner as well. And you can do it tonight. You said, no, you would do it. And you did not. And I also exactly, sent you an email and said. And that's because but, uh, the chair of the committee canceled the meeting that was going to be here. Done. He can't and speak. He stop you from opening the confidential no. envelopes that the contained it therein that we just discussed at that meeting. I'm our, sorry. Our, 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 we, we threw interrupting me in the process. Absolutely. Of but you so I hand carried it to the, the committee chair for him to set up a committee meeting so that we could discuss the the applications or the applicants for the position. We have never had a organized legal administrative committee meeting. What do you mean legal? Are you it's saying that our administrative, administrative committees are held illegal? It's an administrative committee meeting. It has to be posted. It has to be announced. It has to have an agenda. And we've never, we've never had a committee meeting like that. Okay, so having those other two applicants reviewed by me and her and you, three of the four, and Mr. Platt was ill that night, but no decision was made. We were made privy to um, what was contained therein, but that still doesn't have anything to do with number five. Number five is the appointment of acting, not permanent. We don't know whether or not we're going to have a, a permanent out, out of the process well, of those four applicants. We can only have permanent. So but, uh, I am totally against acting district administrators. In just a minute, I see you. I'm totally against it. And, and then I may be getting in trouble on this one, Chris, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway. Can you shut up? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I am against appointing Chief Siegel as the acting administrator because of one huge reason, I don't trust him. Ooh, that's we have had, we have point had. Of order. This point, point of order. Point of order. Didn't you just say order. not to, um. And now, Mr. Bird, oh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the reason that I recommended that this be deferred is because it's, it's the position of an acting district administrator, which is a personnel matter, and the discussions related to the qualifications and discussions candidates before they are hired, in my opinion, is a personnel matter that should be discussed in the executive session. So my recommendation 
to the commission was to defer this matter until at least Monday night. Well, we've had that three applicants in house. Hold it, hold it. This motion has nothing to do with hiring a full time permanent person. This motion, it just has an acting district administrator. Next week, there could be an administrative meeting, and y'all might decide to hire somebody else. And Fort Chris would have a very short job. Or y'all might take forever to find somebody. It could take months to find somebody. But we need to have somebody in a place right away. And Chris Seabolt, Chief Seabolt, has half of our employees work for the fire department. He already has experience with half the thing, half our employees. He's been here for a while. He knows the score. You're now getting back and now, into the same situation. Okay, but yeah, but you, you brought it up. But um, this motion has nothing to do with hiring a new administrator. Absolutely not. And we could hire a new person sometime next week when you call that committee meeting. Uh, and and like I said, it's just a temporary position and gives us some play time so we can go through the process and hire somebody who would be good for this district. It's a temporary position. And I move that this is uh, going to wait until Monday. <laughs> After executive sessions, so we can discuss. Yeah, yeah. We have, a, we yeah. have, have that. There's, thing, like, Ms. Woolsey has made a has made a motion, like, and I believe it's been I believe it's been seconded. Yes. So we're in the we're amendment. in the discussion. And I have something, Mr. Chair. She needs to amend her motion a little bit because the position of the district administrator and their qualifications has to live on James Island, and we need to suspend that. Well, um, that was for the new hire. This is a temporary position. And, and the other the thing yeah. I had, I wanted to add, you got three legitimate applications and one written in crayon. One written in crayon. Is that a legitimate application? Well, we're we not discussing this. Session. We're discussing a temporary acting district administrator. Okay, the I'm federal government the is full of I acting know administrators. Know all the questions. The mayor will go to call time second. Uh, there was a comment in there uh, in the motion about me being put on administrative leave. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you have to have a reason to do that. Yep. No, we don't. Yeah. This you is don't. a right to work to state. I have a contract. contract. His contract is no good in this state. It's a five year contract. He should have never been given a five year contract. He has a contract that was. It I mean, you were seriously attacking me four days before I retired. After 20 oh, years of good service. Four days? I can't wait. He has a car. All right, all right, enough. He That's a, a libelous we're statement, ma'am. You've made several of them tonight. I'm glad we're on the TV. We have two called questions on the floor. Maryland's first, mine second. Can we get a roll call? I, I would like an well, opinion we'll, from our uh, attorney. Yeah, from, the, from a legal up? standpoint, he is under contract that was approved by the commission. Unless there are grounds for termination that support putting him on administrative leave through the end of his contract period, that's not a proper action. He's and still I, on payroll. But you have to have a, a reason that you're replacing him before his contract period is up. You're not going to renew his contract, but he's still under contract. We're tired. And okay. this, well, this is why we needed an executive session. Okay, let's. Well, we can't hide everything behind these four walls. No. People know what's going on. That's why you take and action. And the thing about it is, I don't session. feel any employee right now is safe until the end of it. Mr. Wise can stay. Mr. Sebo can be an acting district administrator. Or even from his office, he can do that. That's not the motion. Though. The motion is to put Mr. Wise on the Well, let's, let's leave him as is and Mr. Mr. Chief Siebel will be acting district administrator from his office. October Nothing happens one, without him knowing that. October 1 at the end of my contract. Say what? October 1 would be his start date after the end of my contract. You just said four days. All right, well, I... It's hard to remember what day it is, isn't it? Well, because y'all don't work Fridays, is that right? So one, two, three, four, and one Friday. It goes by the calendar. Yes. 
Where were we? Do you have a motion? In a second. I've provided legal advice that part B of the motion, I believe, is inappropriate based on the fact that Mr. Wise is under contract. Amend your motion to take that part off, Kathy. Just do it. Okay. That's well, not going to work because then you'll have two bosses. Well, well I no, think you need to make it effective. Just the administrator tonight. One be in the office in the chair, but no hiring and firing will go on without it going through Chief Thiebaud. Well, this is why we need an executive session because you're suspending the rights and, and responsibilities of your acting. We have people here that don't feel job safe next week. And somebody that's been me, looking five years, 20 years, shouldn't feel that way. I'd like to amend my motion. Who do you um, think how come you can talk out and don't have to raise your hand and everybody else can do it? Ms. Engelman, who is saying to you, that I am going to fire people next week. Do you think I'm going to sit here and say who's saying that? <laughs> I would hope so. No. Because no. then you're protecting them. Well, Mr. I, Chairman, right. I'd like to amend my motion. Just a minute. You're not going to answer that Part question, Ms. Engelman? No. Um, I have been supportive of you wait a minute. forever. Until and the this last. This year, I have sat on the back seat. I was not I'm not asking for your support. Um, I'm asking please. for your answer to my question. Find a contact. We don't need this. No contact. Contact. Order. All right. Hold, hold it. Point of order. I'm yeah. sorry. We don't need to have this kind of nonsense. You made libelous statements that I would fire people. I would like to hear from you what she that didn't means. Say that. Yes, she did. It means you have acts to grind with some of the people here. Name even, one. Even the way you have treated Chief Sebo since May is uh, We're back to the personnel actions again that no, do not need to be brought up at this meeting. Well, you commented that you don't trust him. How bad can I that said, be? I said at the time that I was probably digging the hole for myself. Well, you you Go ahead, Ms. Kirby. Let's get back to where we are, please. I've asked to request it to amend my motion. And your motion is? The commission appoints Chris Seabolt as acting district administrator effective at the expiration of Mr. Wise's contract. Second. Any other discussion? I would just like to ask, so, but this is something that it was felt by our there's attorney. There's a motion on the that floor. I was saying, yeah, but it's I just wanted to make sure, really it's quick, it's because I want to be okay, sure. I, I want to get, just again, you know, things have already gone over, but I want to be sure. But it is best advised by you that we wait on this until after executive session so we can speak about some things that need to be correct. Yes. Just out of fact, I got this agenda after it had already been published. I have not seen it. Um, Welcome to our world. My, my legal advice was that this was a personal matter that should be discussed in the executive session before you actually get But my thing is it doesn't really become effective until after we have your executive session so we could have the right Monday night say, eh, we're a little leery of that now because it doesn't start till the end of Mr. Wise's contract. That's just like what they had said earlier about the other issue that had come up. About the executive session being because now it's been published. The executive session will be on Monday. We're going to do a regular meeting, so we can apologize to anybody who shows up at that. And we'll be able to do whatever is necessary in the process after that is done. Okay, Ms. White, do you still have any functioning idea of where we are? So we're on the amendment? Um, you have to vote on the amendment first, or just change it without doing the amendment? Uh, she amended her motion, so you, you and it was second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so no, it wasn't. I second Ms. Clifford second. Okay. So we have to vote on the amendment, right? That's the motion that's yeah, on the floor. The amendment is that she is changing yeah. the interim start date 
she is redacting anything that mentions anything about an administrative ruling so that he would go in on October 1st. Just, just a few days, okay. Even though this vote is against. Even though Monday approval. night we're going to have executive session, we can undo whatever we do, but it's out here, and let's for once just do something, please. Okay, Ms. White, if you. Let me read it again. Yes. This is the amendment. No, yeah, this is the whole, the amended motion. Amended motion, right. Yes. Okay. The commission okay. appoints Chris Siebel as acting district administrator to take effect when Robert Wise's contract expires. Commissioner Brown Crouch? Yes. Commissioner Clifford? Yes. Commissioner Engelman? Yes. Commissioner Laughlin? No. Commissioner Platt? Commissioner Poston? No. Commissioner Woolsey? Yes. Motion carries 42. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you won't hide under the carpet now? Chief, do you really expect me to? Uh, can we go on to number six, please? <laughs> I didn't say he was the one. Okay. Last item on the agenda is storm cream, storm debris collection and mechanics. Uh, I have a motion. Mr. Chairman. Okay. District Solid Waste Director and his team for the work they are doing to remove st storm debris from the island. The district will collect storm debris from all of the district, including the town of James Island, regardless of whether the town continues to participate in Charleston County's debris removal contract. The district will continue to cooperate with the town of James Island, Charleston County, and the city of Charleston to efficiently and expeditiously remove storm debris from the island. It is the Commission's policy that district equipment and personnel be used to remove storm debris from all areas of the district. For example, collecting storm debris on the Monday route on Mondays, the Tuesday route on Tuesdays, the Wednesday route on Wednesdays, and the Thursday route on Thursdays, returning to each area each week until all storm debris is removed. The Commission's policy is for all district residents to see that the district is working for them rather than returning af day after day to the same area of the district until it is complete and then moving on to other areas. The district's priority should be to remove storm debris from the primary and major collector roads of the district, such as Folly Road, Maybank Highway, Harborview Road, Riverland Drive, Camp Road, Fort Johnson Road, Dills Bluff Road, and Secession Road. <coughs> the district solo waste director is to implement these policies using his best judgment and continue to remove storm debris in a reasonable and efficient manner. The district administrator and chair shall review having Charleston County manage the district's FEMA reimbursement for storm debris removal for this and future storms and report to the commission at its next regular meeting. Second. I agree with all of it, but see, I don't think we need to say cooperate with the town. They did excellent <coughs> after Hugo. They're doing a good job now. You can't expect storm debris to be picked up in that short a period of time. But I like all the motions except C. It's under discussion, um, this this is not even a motion that should be made. We have a set of services that we've had for since 1961. 
and we have performed them extremely well in my last 20 years, and we've had several storms, and Walter has handled those very well. And uh, I think that this is political. I believe that uh, the mayor is running for election in November. He's already been on the TV showing how people to separate their trash or storm debris. That is not his responsibility. It's not his preview. Our enabling act is to find what we're supposed to do here, and we are doing it, as we've done in the past. Um, I'm in the process of responding to an email that he has sent me with multiple questions. Um, I will have the attorney review it because he gave me that email with his attorney's name on it. Um, I also would like the opportunity for our solid waste director to speak because he has done a hell of a job. And all this is driven because it's a political situation. So if you allow me, I would like yeah. to in just a second. I've got something here I want to say first. Um, we will be having Mr. Kevin up in just a second. Mm -hmm. But I want everybody to understand something. This is the PSB is an island wide organization. We do not just work for or report to the town of James Island. With Mr. Desmond, we have the right person at the right time with the right qualifications, um, given the right directions, and working with the, the county and the collectors doing the right business in the project. And, uh, the mayor and I have already had a discussion on an email that you cannot pick up storm debris based on a schedule. If you have a situation like we have with the storm prop programs, a truck can be just uh, uh, sent out with the idea to pick up on Secessionville Road, for example. And before that truck gets there, something could happen or, or, or a problem could arise that makes Riverland Drive a more essential pickup. So you're on different pickup times, so you cannot do storm debris, storm debris pickup on a schedule. The waste, solid waste people have already begun the process of picking up our solid waste, our garbage, and they've already begun the process of picking up the household debris that normally comes out. But storm debris, and, and, and Mr. Wise said, it's going to take probably 45 to 60 days. And last I heard, that, that we're actually a little bit ahead of on the process. But the very fact that they started working on the northeast section of the island, Rivlin Terrace, and we had our commissioner over there telling them that they cannot pick up on a street because it happens to have a city uh, resident in the middle of the street it is wrong. The entire street I'm was not city. finished. The entire street I was city. Our people were picking up city traffic. Enough. Folks, I apologize to you, but this is what I've had to put up with for nine months now. No, nine months. No, no, nine Last months. Three. Um, you act like you think you're the our father or something. Um, Mr. Wise, if you would please introduce Mr. Desmond. I'd like to speak to my motion first. No. I want to ask the question of you first. It's not that, not negative. Who gave permission? to put all this debris at the new Station 1 property. I'm going to let Mr. Desmond answer that. I'd like to speak for myself, if you, if all, if, if you would all please afford me that opportunity. Walter, please come forward so that the, the, everybody can hear you. I don't want to have anybody saying I can't hear. The debris was placed on the property at Station 1 because I had nowhere to dump. The county, at the last minute, and well before, well before, uh, did not notify us well before knowing that a storm was coming that none of the debris was going to the Beast Ferry landfill. Man, 
that is not just the James Allen PSB. It wasn't that just was us. Not notified the city of Charleston. None of them. And the county. Oh, I understand. He's doing the work of ten people right now. Okay. And I'm going to add something. First of all, I really have to get it out. <laughs> I heard someone say to me. We, the town and the PSD has to work together. I have seen not one positive email from the town the last week. Everything is running down the PSD, running down Mr. Desmond. I couldn't do his job if I knew how to do it. You don't want to. No. Me. <laughs> Believe me. Anyways, thank you, Mrs. Engel, uh, Ms. Engel, Commissioner Engel. With all due respect, anything that's operationally changed in my operation, I implore you to put through committee. Okay, I need the opportunity to explain my processes and procedures because there are, <clears throat> there are rules with FEMA, IGAs. I understand the confusion with the IGAs, but you have to be aware. When you have two entities working together and one activates an IG, IGA, you now have your own claim. All my force account labor, everything that I have to claim for FEMA, anything I do in the town, now have, the town has to handle that claim. Their debris needs to be separated. I have to dump that somewhere else. I need the opportunity to explain all this. I mean, don't disrespect anybody in this room, but I've been in this business for 35 years, every single day of it in operations, okay? Um, when, you, when we have storm debris like this, you need to get the storm debris off the ground, okay? Because there, when four or five weeks down the process, when what seems to me that you're all suggesting is I go into Monday and do the best I can, then go into Tuesday and do the best I can, that doesn't work. Because once green debris goes on top of that, the contractors aren't going to touch it, okay? The first push, the first pass is the most important. Okay, that's where all the money's spent. That's where all the, that, that's where all the force account labor comes in. Because if the county declares an end of this operation, and I'm still stuck with a whole bunch of debris, that's free. And I have to haul in all the bees ferry, and that's going to be an issue. Please, there are reasons why we do what we do. And I implore you to please put it through committee, and I'd be more than happy to explain all my procedures to the Solid Waste Committee, the reason why we do things, the city, the city, me and, the, me and uh, Matt Altoff, the superintendent from the city, made a gentleman's agreement to pick up all the stuff that was in my areas, and he's doing the exact same thing for me. We figured out the areas we were working in, and we figured that it would be a wash either way. We're doing that for everybody's benefit. We are not doing it, uh, we're, we're, not, we're doing it for everybody's benefit. It, it prevents him from going back to areas that I've already been in there, picking up debris when he doesn't have to. So you, you wash, you know, I wash your hand, you wash mine. That's how that works. But I, I really, I, you know, I'm not a politician. I'm a garbage man. And I, and I think I've stated that to everybody. My goal is the same as all of yours. To get this island cleaned up as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And we're doing that. We're doing that. We have better procedures in place this time. We're moving far quicker than we were in Matthew. Far quicker. But please, be, I, I would appreciate if this commission would not vote on something that's going to change my operation, because that's not fair to me. I wouldn't do that to any of you, and I beg that you don't do it to me. What is IGA? It's an intergovernmental agreement. Oh, okay. But you have one with the city, but not with the town. I do not have an IGA with the city. I don't know where that, that illusion came from, but that, that is not true. I have a gentleman's agreement with the city to pick up pick up debris that's on my roots. But you but don't have an agreement with the town. I, I don't need an agreement with the town. But I you've been written here by law. Listen, it's, with all due respect, that was misstated in there. That was not what they were supposed to read. Okay, well, and I talk around and tell the mayor what it's supposed to say. Commissioner. I'm not, I, I, I don't feel like I have to explain anything to, to anybody but this commission right now. I'm sorry about if, that, if anybody takes that as disrespectful. That's not what I mean. We provide the services for the town of James Island. We are not doing anything different today than we've done in the past. All right, you, you're, you, uh, it, what frustrated me the most was all the negative comments on, on Facebook. People made assumptions. People were just putting stuff out there that was absolutely 150% not true. Okay, and our own governing body is, is, is sending com uh, negative comments out about my operation and what I do, and you know who that affects? My crews. When I have four people approach me and say, do they not think we're going fast enough? Are we not doing well enough? That's where I draw the line. I have those people's backs there. I have it today, and I'll have it for the rest of my career here, however long it may last. But please, don't change my operation without affording me the opportunity to explain. My only, I mean, 
My only concern is that the James Island Public Service District gets served. No, okay. I, I understand. And that's, that's, if I and that's lie, why I reading this, I'm though, but because reading through, so apparently there's things being communicated in this motion that was made that I'm I'm not picking up on. Maybe, if, maybe I missed. No, because I'm sitting here going. But, the yeah. first one says y'all are doing great. The second one says, um, including the town, which I think like 90% of the town's in the PSD anyway. Mm -hmm. But I think that. But last. The okay, let me finish, please. And then, all right. So then. So then last there, week, yeah. or last meeting rather, when they were talking about that test zone, about, you know, some people pick it like, why have one um, PSD trash can down here, let the city do it? Then it was absolutely not because the city will dig up your yard and all this stuff. I don't care about my yard. You do whatever you want. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, uh, I understand see, what you're so now all of a sudden, now it's like, now it's, everything's cool. Well, I don't it's, it's understand. Storm degree, it's a big and so that's different. It's okay. different. And that's I also, what I need to clarify. I also, by making that deal, with, uh, and I apologize. I'm that's sorry. okay. If I'm, if I seem upset, it's because I am. I don't blame and, uh, you. I'm not. Um, it also, the city, in turn for that agreement, got me a drop site down at the Bayview Soccer Club that is saving us a ton of time, a ton of fuel. <coughs> this is operations. Because y'all had to go do. all the way down to freaking Ravenel, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and this is operations. It's what we do. We make deals with each other. We wash each other. You know, we want you. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. And it's for everybody's best interest. There's been more cooperation from the city, the county, and all of us during this current storm than I've ever seen in the six years that I've been here. So no Everybody's no. on the same page. Let's just get her done. And But please, I see operational changes in there that I don't oh, think okay. are fair, and I don't, and I, and I don't, I don't want my, my processes being under scrutiny until we've all had an opportunity to sit down and talk about it. Is that fair? I will not answer that. Thank you. Who wrote this letter? I wrote that. I have to speak back. Um, yes, I just would like to say thank you so much, uh, Mr. Desmond. Thank you. Thank you for that explanation. You must I'm going to say one more time what I started out with. The PSD in Charleston County and James Island and everybody else in Sumer has the right person with the right qualifications with the right tech plans in the right place at the right time doing the pickup of the debris on the time. <clears throat> Fire department has done an excellent job on getting the roads clear and I noticed that we're talking here, the district priority should be to remove storm debris from the primary and main collector roads in the district, such as Folly Road, Maybank Highway, Harborview Road, Rivlin Drive, Camp, Fort Johnson, and Bill Club, Session Road. The fire department has already done that. They've picked up all the debris. They've cleared the road, but they haven't picked up the debris. Their job is not to be picked up. Their job is to clear. Exactly. They did that. You know, I, I like to add something to what you just said. I do think we need to find out the firemen that were on duty the night of the storm and put a letter in their jacket thanking them for what they did during the powerful winds and rains and everything. This is another issue. That's another issue. And hold that thought and we can talk about it another time. Sure. And I agree with you on that. So I have a real problem with a motion that essentially says that the PSD works for the town of James Island. It doesn't say that. It says he reports to, coordinates with, uh, cooperates with the district shall will continue to cooperate with the town of James Island, Charleston County, and the city of Charleston to efficiency and expeditely remove the storm debris. Is that I what y'all are doing, isn't it? Do you it? mind if I get to finish the sentence before you start interrupting? You added stuff that wasn't on there. If if you're going to continue on this, I'm going to ask you to leave. <laughs> I have the right to do that, Mr. Mr. Chairman. With all due respect, she's got. There's a written motion here, and I, think I understand that. And, and the discussion, I understand discussion about policy and what's going on, but I, you're kind of yes. putting new words into the motions. I don't want there to be any confusion in the record as to what the motion is. She's got the motion written here, and it, it says we'll continue to walk. Totally inoperably against this motion. Normally. A person who makes a motion is allowed to speak to their motion, and I haven't been allowed to do that. 
I've been defending myself, but I haven't been allowed to speak on my emotion. Well, I would like to call the question. Is this a goal forever? Yeah. It really could. I would like to vote on it. Nobody seconded it. May I speak to my motion, please, Sandy? It will yes. keep it brief because I'm done. Without the done. rancor that goes along with it, please. Um, anyway. D, it just says, for example, Walter, it doesn't demand that you do it that way. And it also says down here that it leaves you discretion to do it your way. What what fired this off to begin with, these two letters sent to the mayor of James Island, where our chairman says it is the policy of the district and continued from last year, and I was a commissioner last year and I didn't know about this policy, and I don't know who made the policy. But basically, both of these things are saying they're not going to pick up the town debris. Yet, they can pick up the city debris because they're working with the city. But apparently, they're not working with the town. That, and they have been spent five days cleaning, 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 clearing Riverland Terrace. But they clean up an area. And they did an excellent job of doing Riverland Terrace. And I went down the street and saw all those city cans, and they were picking up trash all down the street, city can, the trash, not their garbage can, but the trash, the, the um, storm debris. We've we got to give time to do that. There were no cans in storm debris. You know, no, there the wasn't, garbage. but they, it was their trash day and they had them out, so I knew exactly who was city and who wasn't. May I please yes. answer yes, briefly? All I'm requesting right now is to, to, is to please go to the solid waste me. If you want explanations, then that's fine. But when you are when you are asking me to change my procedure or change the way I operate, I would just appreciate that, that we would all sit down at the committee and do it. That's all I'm asking for. If, all, all will be answered in committee. But I, I don't want to sit here and go through my whole entire operational procedure right now. I don't think that's. I, I don't think that's. All I want to do to you are you. You are picking up town stories. Yes, ma'am. I'm an oppressor. Well, right why now. did you I'm write a, this letter saying you weren't? He Listen, did. I did. You wrote this letter. I wrote that letter. You wrote this for him. It's got his name on it. Did you not write this? I we wrote didn't some of it. Yes. On the floor. You're right. We have a call. We've right. got two letters saying we're not picking up town. Let's not say that. You're we have a call and question. Done. Good I would right, like to know what law says you can't pick up town. Can I have a second? Uh, Commissioner Brown Trout. I don't even know when I'm, I'm confused. Is there a second? Yes. Is there one second? Who did? Clifford. Okay. Are you, are you, are you approving that Commissioner Woolsey's yes, motion to interfere? There you go. Go ahead, Ms. White, please. Commissioner Brown Trout. Come back to me. This is the storm debris collection motion. Is this cut off the bank? Is this what the boat is for? No. Call the question and we're going to vote. Okay. When you call the question, you got to vote. Don't you have to vote? That's no. Vote in on ending the debate and then vote it. There was, a, there was a motion and a second. There was discussion. She called the question, which is in called discussion. The vote. Storm debris collection. Commissioner Brown Crouch. I'll come back to you. Commissioner Clifford. No. Commissioner Engelman. I'm not going to tell Mr. Desmond how to do his job, no. Commissioner Laughlin? No. Commissioner Platt? Commissioner Olson? No. Commissioner Woolsey? Yes. Commissioner Brown No. I'm done. Motion fails. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Brown Crouch? Yes. Commissioner Clifford? Yes. Commissioner Engelman? Yes. Commissioner Laughlin? Yes. Commissioner Platt? Commissioner Bolson? Yes. Commissioner Woolsey? Yes. Meeting adjourned. <coughs>